โอเคคุยกี่ so uh yung bully namin na percent service was actually a building massing pero we decided na uh, since hindi namin na achieve yung mga gusto ng mga achieve uh, inisrap po na namin yung uh, initial na building massing namin and sinubukan namin mag start from scratch uh, so dito uh, this is actually one of our goals uh, since last year uh, which was that people people should see people and uh, isa yun sa mga naging factors na inisip namin when designing this new massing kasi yung stakeholders namin was uh, since yung yeah yung stakeholders namin was the children who were the students in the school and the workers who are uh, like the tailors uh, they they're also like the guardians or the parents no children so the naging uh, important naging uh, important factor yun para sa design which was that the parents should be able to see their own children habang nag hindi sila like na close in one space lang and uh, yeah, also the idea of having courtyards, para meron open, uh, open space for playground. Yeah. Uh, I, so I can add lang. Um, so you can see here na the library is uh, beside the courtyard, so that the playground for the children is uh, the difference between the playground and the studying library is blurred out. So, kind of the library is also the playground. Okay. This is just the conceptual idea. Yeah. Conceptual yeah. yeah, diagrammatic lang, in a way. So, here's uh, the attempt of creating the people see people and the building circulation. So, uh, one of the uh, principles we were following was the Waldorf pedagogy for uh, preschools and basically schools for children. So, isa sa sinabi na dun is the children cannot be boxed in basically a box. So, it needs to be uh, irregular in shape so that their creativity is not closed off. So, how do we make it na the working area and the study area or the school is meshed together with each other. And as well as following the people see people. So with a circle, uh, you can see across and everything. And also, uh, we studied the typical classroom setup. So it's a typical classroom setup. It's like... Uh, the teachers in front and then there's multiple rows and columns. Uh, so, what's the problem with that? Nagiging more uh, exposure yun sa harap and the, the ones in the back are more uh, left out. So, what we wanted to do was more radial. So, by making it circular set up, we create a, a shape that's uh, more democratic in a way na everyone's included equally. So how we did it is from circles, 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 we moved one to the back so that uh, the two areas from the top and the bottom still sees each other. So and people see people. And then from that, we extruded it and to create a volume for the circulation. And to add lang, uh, if you remember, our uh, party from last, last, last week is the uh, yung sampayan with the ramp. It's the building facade. So what we needed was it needs to loop around. So from one place, it needs to go back to its original place going around the entire facade. So that's why we created this infinite loop, so it goes back to one place. Siguro, uh, in other words, yung inexplain the lines about uh, classrooms. Uh, in, in other words, basically yung class, yung circular spaces, it uh, makes the children feel like they're part of a community, since 
na uh, community na parang walang hierarchy, walang kapangat. So, yun yung, uh, yun yung idea naman about uh, circular. Yeah. yeah. And then, this is the floor plan we came about. So, what we did here was uh, from the program spaces, we, from the circles, we extruded it, uh, uh, we protruded it outside so areas where more spaces are needed and are less needed. So, for the tailoring area, it's much bigger and the classroom area. So, parang binuntis namin yung side. And then for the machines also, we extruded it out so that uh, there's more space. And then for the storage area naman, so it ramps down. It's smaller since it's just uh, an access area. So the flow of our building is more meshed together. So how, we, how did we do that? So this is the receiving area. So this is the entrance. So coming from here, you can go either to the courtyard, going up to the library, or you can see the boutique here outside, or you can go to the tailoring area. So basically you go going here and going left. Going left, you have access to the office, to the machinery, and that's also having a ramp going up to the classroom areas. Uh, so discussing this area, the library area, uh, it's enclosed over the perimeter of the courtyard here in the middle so that we employ the idea of the first slide, which is library slash playground. So in a way, the tailoring area is also around that so that the parents that are working can see their children through glass or through transparent material playing in the uh, courtyard. And then, so that's how we kind of mesh the tailoring area and the library and the playground together with the two typologies. And also the machinery is meshed with the play area above here. So it's kind of like the catwalk above the machineries. So the students can observe and even go down to the machinery area uh, using the ramp. And it's surrounded by the loop area, looming area for the textile. And then for the washing area, naman, this area. Uh, so after washing, the, uh, we can explain it later. So washing, sorting, air is connected. Uh, may add ka po, Julian for now. So basically we, we still followed the initial bubble diagram that we designed. Pero yung difference lang dito is we try to make it more uh, meshed together, like hindi separate yung uh, spaces for tailoring uh, sa, sa school. So, eh, like for example, when the yung mga children is nasa play area and they want to go to the uh, like the library, they don't have to uh, par parang madadaanan nila yung places where uh, fabric is being uh, recycled. So, nagiging, hindi siya nagiging separate part of the building. Basically, they compartmentalize. Uh, yung, okay. naging separate, yung pinang naging separate lang dito is yung boutique. Since yun yung place na may separate, may hiwalay na stakeholder, which is yung customers. The rest is for uh, the tailors and the uh, students. Yeah. So this is the exploded axle metric of the, the floor plan kanina, showing how the actual shape is ramped from end to end. So from here and the below, uh, uh, in the front, is ramping upwards and then looping around and then ramping downwards again. Here, ramping downwards again. So this is the circulation. So as you can see, it's infinite, even in, in the courtyard. So that's why we put a ramping 
area din sa courtyard so that it's endlessly looping from the entrance. So it's either you go up here to access this area or you go inside. So you have two, op two options, either the outdoor access or the indoor access. So this is the one I was talking about, the uh, sorting slash washing area. So after that, so the next challenge was to how do we make it infinitely looping the sampayan, the facade. So starting from here, we're planning to, uh, the flow is going to be on the edge of the building going around and then crossing the, the building itself going to the other side here so that it's still on the exterior wall and then going inside again to pass through the entrance and going inside back to the sorting area or drying area. The important part of the loop is that uh, the is the machine room which is uh, after after nila mag dry outside the, uh, in the facade, uh, kukunin din yung clothes dun sa machine room which is dun sa left side para pagbalik niya dun sa, uh, sa laundry or sa washing area, uh, empty na uli yung dali. So, pwede na uli siya maglagyan ng new clothes para isang time. Yeah. So, ito et 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 yung basically the uh, process from a section view. So the when the after the clothes are set uh, collected, they're shredded to the top floor. That's all right. Then they're sorted to the to some tubes, which we're planning to be like uh, instead of glass tubes, they're like mesh, parang net. So organized by color para uh, uh, siyang e wash after. So then magiging parang part din siya ng, uh, parang magiging ornamental part siya ng wall. So, uh, yung mga containers or yung mga tubes na yun. Then, uh, bababa siya. Kaya, kaya nasa taas yung sorting system para bababa yung uh, clothes papunta sa washing area. Which is, uh, yun, hugasan siya dun. Then, they will be clamped into the belt system which goes around the building. So, natatch sa machine room. Then, pagbalik niya, empty na yung belt para pwede siya naglagan din na more clothes. Yeah, and addition lang, uh, we we're planning to make it like, uh, this is the reception area, so pagpasok pa lang, it's the sorting system na that's arranged by color. So I guess it's the aesthetic of it that's very special for us. And then this is the B section for the Sampayan. So that's why it's uh, arching towards the outside. But uh, it's a bit shaded so that if it's raining, it's still shaded while drying. So it's also multi-layered so that you notice that uh, it's not just one track of uh, Sampayan that's going around the entire facade. So it's multi-layered. Uh, uh, this is actually a new idea because we wanted to incorporate the uh, the loom or the machine as like the center or the heart of the process. Because parang yun yung pinaka important part when recycling. So and actually yun yung pinaka malaking part. So once na nag nagin uh, strand na yung mga old floats, uh, they're brought into the loom para gawin siyang bagong fabric. So we yung gusto namin gawin is uh, ayun, i-highlight namin siya as the center. So, nilagay namin siya dun sa isang courtyard, which will be an enclosed space para parang open siya to the to the people. May kita ng mga tao yung uh, yung action, yung room in action. Yeah. Yeah. That's all for uh, we're just continuing the model na lang for this week. Okay, so I guess one of the reasons why it's actually frustrating about our situation now, although let me talk about the benefit of having an online setup, modality for that matter, uh, when it comes to design 
classes. Um, if you notice of if you notice the the YouTube channel we're in, I ask you guys to create a video, etc. I think you were able to exhaust a lot of uh, a lot of uh, effort, a lot of uh, skills in order to produce a deliverable that is that can be utilized digitally. Uh, whereas if it's going to be face-to-face, -face, I will be mixing the requirement with physical modeling. But of course, that is mm -hmm. that is something that is actually missing in, in the work process. Uh, I'm going to send you uh, a video that I saw online, but it's something to do with engineering because uh, when we do with something physical, uh, the evidence is based on how physics is involved. Uh, and we're not able to do that. And hopefully, if the third term becomes blended, as the dean already e explained yesterday during our meeting, then probably we have we have an opportunity to exercise such. And uh, it's up to you if you want to make a physical model for this later on that you can include in your uh, digital presentation. But definitely, there is something that is that uh, we are missing out when it comes to the learning outcome. Uh, but as for this one, it's, like, it's all just drawing. And, uh, and you know, I don't doubt the integrity of the ideas. It's just that, again, the evidence of it working out needs to be very physical. So uh, can we go to the diagrams that uh, you showed earlier? Okay, so uh, just to clarify what we mean by exploration again, uh, if you notice, the downside of exploration is people would ask, when does it end and how do you actually start? Because it's not a very practical process because exploration is all about looking at different ways and different uh, perspectives in order to approach a project. If it's going to be a conventional one, normally uh, you are going to start with a floor plan, a bubble diagram, maybe a site analysis and bubble diagram and then a floor plan. And then you just extrude it. And then you are, you know, you are left with a very functional building that has no interesting form outside, no interesting physicality outside. And then all of a sudden we have the formalist type of architects that think of architecture in a three-dimensional way, um, wherein they try to merge uh, functionality and form all together in one process. But of course, they are most of the time being judged as a more of a form type of architect. But there are a form type of architects, don't get me wrong. Uh, but uh, we have witnessed in many years that a lot of architects have already uh, explored and exhausted. Um, maybe the, the, the kind of, uh, the Bjarke the, the kind of architect that does this, that, use, that uses diagrams, see three dimensionally, et cetera. So how is exploration different? Again, it's just another step forward in a way that you're not really starting from 2D, you're not really starting from a diagram, et cetera. You can either start from uh, the innovations that you are creating and how it can also influence the overall form. So when it comes to this particular process, this particular step that Lance and Julian uh, started with the diagram and the display, et cetera, again, this is not wrong. Um, Again, I, I can encourage them to, to, to pursue this. Um, pursue this and then, uh, but the moment you design uh, the individual components and the, the individual elements, then uh, you, can, you can already see if it is going to work. But uh, the benefit of doing it this way, taking this process, like, it's like looking at the building from a macro point of view so that you can see it work first as a system. So basically this diagramming, you're looking at the building as an overall system first. And then you probably zoom in to the, to the micro systems, um, just like that. just like uh, what these guys highlighted. Uh, but this is one way, but another way is, if you remember our design to design view, and I, ask everyone to exhaust everything to create innovations and the different ideas when you guys are asked to research and then create part T out of those uh, research material. And then that can give birth to a building idea. That is also another way. So we call it exploration. And um, another reason why it's all, 
call exploration because you can start with this method and then later on jump into the party and then try to marry each other and then try to uh, balance the ideas together and then uh, and then edit. As a designer, we are expected to edit. Uh, we cannot have all the good ideas. We cannot expect all the good ideas to be in one composition. Um, you need to be able to edit any designer for that matter, industrial designer, fashion designer, etc. cetera, uh, much more so with architects. So, uh, so I'm looking forward how this will project will uh, turn out. So uh, can we move forward to the section diagram that uh, you guys presented? Okay, so again, we, are, we have yet to see uh, the, the details of how this is going to work, right? So uh, you guys know that already, Lance and Julian, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Also, also, don't forget the building technology. If you remember my critique, not critique, but it's something that I used to tease uh, Tracy and Kev about their recent video um, about the structural. We saw a lot of long span roofing. So, uh, yeah, maybe eventually in the future we can uh, witness technology. Uh, making that ideas, idea possible. Uh, but right now, let's try to work with something that is agreeable first. And then uh, unless there's a research that you can back it up with, I'm more welcome to, to see it. But I didn't see it in the presentation. But nonetheless, the, the presentation was excellent. Um, Tracy's and Kev's uh, video. Uh, if I'm going to nitpick, sorry, Lance, do I have to say it so that I won't forget? Um, is that it, it lacked the climax? Like, you know, just a little more effort so that it would have ended with fireworks with the band. So, because uh, you already started, you guys already committed to a task that will involve a non architecture skill, a non architecture, uh, which is it's a creative skill. So uh, that will benefit you as a practitioner later on the way you are going to present ideas. Um, in order for you to excel in this profession is that you need to be very creative. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that you know, I'm the best example, but I try my best to create other mediums of presentation, such as you know, making a video, etc. But if you guys can push it further, uh, you know, better. So if I'm going to nitpick about that video, just you know, end with the bank. If you can just, if you could have edited like pro probably a short walkthrough with a different footages, you know that would have made really a perfect video presentation. But other than that, it's well directed. It's something that a non-architect would do in a video because it's not our skill skill set. So, uh, but the other parts, like uh, eighty percent of the video of the of the final presentation, was really superb very educational, technically presented, and uh, it's a, just a well-organized video presentation. That is not to say that the Julian's, Lance, and Sila, the others, and Daniel's are not the same, it's just that maybe the benefit of, of, of Kevin and, and Trace is that they saw uh, the previous ones and they tried to improve on it. So now that, you know, uh, and now that we've seen everything, maybe that's my last comment. Like, in order for you to improve upon it after the that video, maybe just you know present the climax, present the uh, yeah a bang towards the end. Yeah, okay, sir. okay, see yeah, you. Okay, see you. Okay, um, Julian, uh, Lance, do you have any questions? Uh... Wala so, naman sir. So far, so, you're planning so far, to. Sa fabric, ano ka musta pala yung fabric building? Actually, yun nga yun. Kasi, um, sir, yung schedule namin, I mean, yung tinatry namin gawin na schedule is we're gonna finish this as soon as possible na since the next meeting should be start, we should be starting on the fabric building. Oh, kasi the reason why I compromise on the expectations last requirement because I want you guys to, you know, still work on the video walkthrough and to go into Put this in the 3D, in the walkthrough of your. Parang you update, you're going to update the the videos with the uh, with the 3D, like in a short clips like that. So how do you imagine this in the burn up plan? 
that you presented last term. Mm. Oh, yun. I, I don't, I'm not sure if I explained it last time, I, but I, I did explain this to Kier and uh, Jenny. Uh, I remember that vividly. And uh, because, you know, Design 6 is our culmination for the Burnham exhibition. And they, I think Daniel asked, what will happen to the other groups? You're only designing two buildings. So the landmark definitely is a special, unique building. And the special typology. And then the fabric building will be like uh, a prototype. And then the other should be just an assumption. Meaning, you don't need to create a detailed plan, a detailed uh, idea for it. Just basically gets the facade. So when you create that uh, walkthrough, the other buildings will sort of have the same DNA uh, that you generated for the fabric building. Mm. Ayun, parang yeah. ano lang siya, parang lang siyang permutation. Permutation of the, the original prototype of the fabric building. Yeah. Okay. Actually, sir, we're planning to get the DNA from this sana. Kaya namin tinatapos to muna. Okay. Okay. Uh, we get, we're going to send something. But the, uh, the, the big question is, yes, the ideas are great, but the the washing thing, is it applicable to other typologies such as residential, commercial? Maybe that, is that how I you imagine it? Is that how you imagine the city? If the city is like an industrial type, then maybe it, it can be. So uh, that's why somehow, I think that's also the reason why Sheila Kevin and, and Tracy took a long time because they really thought about everything and imagine that the entire city will be bamboo oriented or nature and tropical oriented. So try to, try to achieve a very consistent uh, progress. Uh, from your city vision to your building fabric. Because you know, the, the success of your master plan is somehow a small percentage of it is hinged on how you're able to develop the, the other buildings and how people will use the entire city. If you envision it a certain way, then try to achieve it. Like Sila Jiao and Sila Anois uh, Beyas talking about skateboarding and everything. So I would imagine that not not among everything, but majority, you know, will have the kind of culture because it's it encouraged. The way I imagine it's like it's going to be like, you know, uh, an uh, iteration of Barcelona or the, uh, Malibu, California. So uh, yeah, okay. Okay, sir. I'll see you. All right, thank you. So uh, Fabrico and Francis. Hello, sir. Awesome. Rinig naman, Thank you, sir. Oh, rinig naman. Sige. Sorry, um, about, so, sir, sorry about... Okay, go ahead. Um, wala ka sa si Francis ngayon, sir. Medyo... Parang so mabog ata PC niya or something. So, really? uh, I guess it's just me. Yeah, really? I think it's regarding the power supply. Medyo nasunog ata or something while he was rendering. So, he can't join now. Okay. But I'll present whatever I get for yung past three weeks, sir. Okay, sige. So go ahead if you want to share. You that, sir? Yeah. Oh, okay. So basically, for the last yung three weeks since yung first na meeting, this is like our our last design that we proposed. So we were basically proposing like a mixture of communities into uh, the, our residential type of uh, typology which we actually had three types of residential based on the given um, location. So that would be first in socialized housing, which would be located in the Muslim community because there is a large abundance of urban core. And then the second type would be uh, a socialized apartment. So that would be of service for government areas. And the last residential typology would be the um, single detached housing. So that would be kind of a more privatized type of housing since we already have yung mga, like the, since we have like, uh, corporate centers that serve the private sector. So private housing was in a way necessary as also. So yung last two weeks, sir, um, you hindi included this, this week. You were actually thinking of like different parties mula to include. So um, it was only this week that we had an idea to create yung form mismo or the typology itself after integrating all the party ideas that we had. 
uh, nung three weeks ago. So um, to start off the party, um, the first kind of idea wa he had was like proposed um, residential module dimensions. So since um, one of our residential typologies was like apartments, um, me and Francis already stated or like thought of like specific dimensions to serve for that um, mga residential. So the two, if you can see my cursor, sir, yung dalawa dito, the one with like yung my panel roof, those would be the resident the dimensions for the residential units. And then for the two right ones would be like for the communal areas that we had an idea, I, that we had in mind. So this was actually the idea of how we wanted to create the residential. So it's building programming for residential spaces in a residential complex. So it actually takes up majority of the space. And we had an idea that if we're going to create like an apartment or like socialized housing, we wanted to uh, put the residentials in like the outer perimeter of the building. So that way they can have um, more privatized area, like some outside now windows facing the street. While the inside of that um, typology, it can be a more communal area since they have like a centralized uh, space per residential unit. Uh, so this is what um, me and France had in mind, like aside from the residential, having their own like more privatized space. Sagitna is more of the communal space, like either collaborative or um, intimate space. Okay. And then for the green spaces on top, we plan to have building programming for green space in a residential complex. So they're placed at the top of residential units to serve as an extra living space for the residents and also a place that parents or guardians can use to watch over their children playing in the playscape. So this is like how we imagine the playscape naman above those communal areas that we had in mind. So building program for a playscape in residential complex, they're placed at top of communal spaces at the roofscape of the communal space creates a dynamic surface where kids can play and where adults can hang out. So it serves as a walkway or staircase to access their units while being immersed in the community. So simultaneously serving as a space where people could gather and for interactions even in the smallest way to happen. Mm -hmm. And then um, for the last part of the party, of the first party that we have, it's more on like the expansion spaces. Since um, considering that um, condos or even apartment blocks today are designed to maximize space for profit. So we tried creating a different approach towards designing these buildings and turning them into like permeable structures that the public can walk through is most optimal. So if we take a look at how residential blocks and cities function, we can observe that public could only walk around a residential building and not through it. And so um, we tried to propose a concept for apartment and uh, apartment complexes beside you know, Aros Aros Forest Park, which we plan to put the apartments in. And we decided to renew the idea of what a residential complex should be like and turn it into a space where accessibility and permeability through these spaces is not a concern. So, um, well, as ito yung how we imagine expansion spaces. So, um, Francis made like, some diagrams of like samples of expansion spaces that could be used within those residential buildings. So, um, it becomes like an optional way. So, um, since for an optional activity, people can mo maximize more of its space. So, like it could be a gym, it can be like a party area, or maybe a lot of dance studio. So, it actually depends on the residents on how they want to use it. So um, Francis was actually uh, reading a book by John Gill. It was called um, Yung Life Between Buildings. So referencing John Gill and his book, he mentioned that in order, for, he mentioned that in order for spaces to be called high quality, a space should be able to cater to an abundance of activities of different categories. So these activities or the categories are dissected to necessary activities, optional and social. So this allows the space to be more ambiguous and multifunctional, giving the essence of a live space. So using those um, stated different activities, we took into consideration of how we can maximize them and maybe use them to target how we want communities or how people we want people to act within a community area. 
So for the second party, we were actually focusing more on the elderly. So initially, we took their anthropometric uh, data to see how they move around. So we were actually taking the data of how research suggests that elderly people, so these are the ages of 65 and above, need around 2.5 hours of exercise weekly. So um, in average, that's basically 30 minutes of exercise a day. So from that, we what if we try to create um, like ramps with only single corridor that way um, in one side of the ramp it's more on like the technical sides like spaces residential house units but on the other side what if it's open so that people can actually communicate to other people um, aside from like um, obviously elderly the elderly community needing exercise to therapize young physical disabilities um, there is also one other common um, disability that they have, which is Alzheimer's, which is considered one of the top five common disabilities among them. So um, we were reading an article about Alzheimer's on how can maybe architecture in a way cure that. So one thing that we actually discovered was one way to therapize Alzheimer's was constantly talking to people that you know. So the more you talk to like a certain person, the, the less you tend to forget that person. So in a way, what if we tried to make communal spaces for elderly? So they constantly communicate with people and in a way they kind of don't feel alone or don't forget about them. So aside from using mobile throat exercise, they need like a more social reason. Since like in you know, typical like um uh parent elderly care center, most of them don't want to go out or don't want to talk to people because they don't really have a reason to go out, so they'd rather just stay at home and do their common work. So what if we provide a reason for them to actually go out, to actually talk to people? So aside from the technicality of providing ramps, maybe these ramps can serve a purpose on where they can talk to more people, communicate with them, see them. So from this diagram, um, we wanted to create like the ramps with the like two-way ramps, that way people or elderly specifically can talk to other people uh, while walking mismo. And the reason why we created like uh, like a dissection of ramps rather than one whole ramp going up or going down is because um, following your 1 is to 12 ratio, um, we dissected it to like 9 meters only or 9 meters of like the slope. So if you actually do the math, sir, um, around 9 meters will give you a height of like 1.2 to 1.5 meters. So that's around your chest or that's around your head level. So imagine if that's the height of between ramps. If you're going up or up on the first floor, you can see another person going up or down or up on the second floor. So parang hindi siya derechong ramp na you're just gonna walk. But while in the middle of going up or going down, you actually see people and other people on other levels can see you. So that's one idea that we have for our second party. And like um, we do know that since elderly do need exercise, um, it's obvious that they can't do this on extreme measures. So we wanted to provide like in between ramps. Maybe we can provide like social spaces or what we actually wanted to call them rest spaces, so that hindi siya sobrang tedious. Kait na like even though if it's a light slope, at least between ramps, elderly when they are like too tired they can rest between these spaces and maybe we can also make them as coexisting spaces. So they have like not only one purpose, which is rest, but also spaces where people are most commonly at to work, to socialize, or basically to relax. So for the third party naman that we had in mind, we were targeting the adolescent community because um. There and your adolescent community, they're one of the most important in the stages of life. It's because this is where they're mostly impacted since it's between the childhood and the adulthood. It's between how um people tend to be like carefree to how people become more mature. So it's at this period is where in they're impacted or how they're per or how they actually define their personality. So using like that adolescent group, we took into consideration like you know how a typical work co work space uh, looks like. It's basically a lot of chairs, a lot of windows, maybe some commercial units. But 
um, going back to that typical co-work space, th- we can say that this is a this is basically a space that's biased to people who are adults, people who are mature. It's not actually a space for kids or maybe like um adolescent kid or like in grade school. So how can we transform that, that kind of space with the you know, Angie play that uh, Francis was mentioning um a few weeks ago? So this is actually like the creative learning space, like um, like how you create like with random materials like wood or like styrofoam ladders. How can you use those kind of different materials to create like a movement course, obstacle course, a play area for kids? So this is where our third party um revolves around. So how do we transfer a co-work space with um a learning a kids learning space? So um before going into that, of course, we had to consider like the different data on how kids, since they're more active, on how they climb, how they run, how they sit. So initially, this is where we had different iterations. So initially, they actually we actually thought na just like the typical co-working space are basically platforms with seats, with tables, with maybe stairs or movement technicalities. But how do we incorporate yung kids' movement area to a typical co-work space? So what we had an idea was like different obstacle course activities like um, um, climbing, monkey bars, um, hurdles, um, balancing bridges, tunnel crawls, and um, basically stuff like that. And how do we integrate it to the typical going space? So if um, I'll explain each iteration um, so it's easier to understand. So the blue ones are actually the passive space, meaning these are the spaces where people tend to be Parents tend to go, tend to be alone, tend to do their usual routine with. And the active spaces are where you um basically activities involved. So um a typical co-working space would have like flat, maybe a flat area where people can sit, study, do. But what if we incorporate um like climbing into one space to another so that people can like maybe there can be an alone space down here or like a reading area, study area. But up here, it can be somewhat like um, a play area for kids. Or like for this one, um, you basically have the typical co-working space of having seats, a study area. But what if we incorporate movement from one space to another? So this is where maybe we can um, incorporate like hurdle movement. Or like we can create a bridge or underneath, parang what if my monkey bar area just going from one area to another? Well, as for the third area, um, what if you create like social, um, basically co-working spaces in between, you might typical study room, but around that you have um, like an elevated area, which can act like a balancing bridge for people to, um, hindi naman run, pero parang go around so that, for example, if you're basically taking care of your kid, but you want to also do your work, your kid can basically enjoy themselves in this area while you work within the area, within the circle. So um, aside from that, we act, since we were using bars, we defined the uh, X, you know, X and Y bar spacing, which is um, this one. So this is the X direction. This is the Y spacing. We made it into 0.3 so that um, para may enough space for people like to climb an area. While as for yung Z bar spacing, like people climbing up, it's 0.2. So these are like the activities that we had in mind. So these are basically just illustrations of how people would like act towards in this specific environment. Okay, so um those um three parties that I stated, those were basically what we did two weeks. So the challenge right now is um how can we um apply these different ideas that we had into a into a practical residential setting, which is young socialized housing. Na, for the urban poor, the socialized apartment, and the um, the single detached housing, which is more privatized. So um, currently for this week, we were working on yung two social yung socialized housing, and the socialized apartment. So um, we defined the dimensions already of those socialized housing, kind of similar to how the we kind of similar to how the apartment units would be dimensioned. So um, we were um, based from the first few ideas. Um, we were talking about how expansion space 
makes um like a more a space for people to do like optional activities to maximize that. But we were thinking, what if that expansion space can act also like a staircase and a ramp? So we were looking into mechanical systems like louvers on how when you certain when you move a staircase like a certain louver, all the other louvers um kind of like act in the same way. So what if you have like bars here or like um different platforms, but when you move one, um it will all act. Maybe it can act towards the stairs, but um if it's flat out. Like you, uh, like the louver area, it's flat out. It can act like a ramp. So that way, not only is it like an expansion space for people, but it's a mobility space for possibly PWDs or like the elderly community. So aside from that, we were also thinking on. You mentioned Kanina, like how can we transform a typical co-working space into something more fun, more creative? So we were looking into like a tag team kind of arena. Because usually in like that kind of tag team arena, you have a mixture of different uh, child movements. Sometimes um in a, that kind of arena, you can like run around, you can climb over platforms, you can um parang over over or maybe go under a certain platform. So um these are basically just uh, sample iterations of how like maybe a it can be a structural system, but integrated it with it can be like some sort of playground. So the initial idea that we had in mind is what if you know what if those bars can act like a structural system below the below the um, the socialized housing unit since we wanted it to act like um I guess the inspiration I can say from this one is like a tree house so maybe it's like um something more privatized in the above area section but below it's more on like the structural or like the tree trunk but then the tree trunk can be used for different activities like a swing like a climbing area, like a, a rope ladder or something like that. So what if we create like a play, like more of a public playground below that unit? So it can also act like a structural area. Then this is basically like an initial iteration that we had for this week. So something as public as a, as a playground and something as semi-public as like a walkway platform and something as private as a, as a socialized unit. So how can all these communicate? So um, basically what we really had in mind is like, maybe we can create like permeability or perforations in between different, those different spaces. So something as public as a playground, you can see, you can see like the parents walking in this platform and then they can see their kids the, down there playing or maybe like the PWDs can go up there and as they see their grandchildren walk um, playing there, they can rest here in like a nearby, in like their nearby homes. So um, I guess you know, for residential, sir, that's all we have for um this week. So basically, what um we have we want to incorporate more of like ideas into the three other residential units that we have and how we can further improve that. Tapos um. Actually, we also from last week, sir. We also had plans already for the uh, the commercial area, but we're not really sure kung matutuloy to kasi yung residential palang na typology we haven't um finalized it yet. So um maybe I can discuss this after your comments for the residential, sir. Okay, so yeah. Uh, well, overall the presentation was as impressive as before because uh, the drawings are professionally done, uh, but. For the design ideas, like I keep reiterating even before, pa, like many ideas can be very innovative and very novel. Um, it's just a matter of being able to implement it given the parameters that we have. Like for instance, I can propose a housing that has a lot of open space and gardens, but it can only fit five families because you need to put a lot of garden spaces. So my challenge for you guys is how you're going to fit all those ramps, and all those open spaces, and all those interactive spaces with the same computation of 70 to 30% efficiency ratio. That's really the challenge of the designer. It's not really about thinking of innovative ideas because you know a lot of these ideas can be taught by others. You know, you know what I mean, Jericho? Yes. And then um, yes, sir, yes. I'm not I'm not saying no to it, but 
it is a requirement that I think I'm going to ask of you, of your group, uh, to present so that uh, I can be more convinced that this is actually uh, doable. Because in the real world, it's you you'll be working with the same parameters. So uh, if you train yourselves in that kind of uh, thinking already, then uh, you'll become a better designer. Because like I said, it's easy to think of something from tabula rasa as compared to you know, having the parameters in place. So going back to the forms, can you go to the first slide with, the, with those random volumes? Like uh, it reminds me of Habitat. I don't know if you're familiar with that product. And uh, are you? No, no, sir. Habitat. Pop. Yeah, Habitat. I, I forgot the name of the architect, but uh, excuse me. This is uh, Habitat Housing in Canada. I forgot the name of the architect. I'm not sure if it's Hertzberger or something, but uh, you can look at that. Uh, those are like random rectangular volumes, and the critique of the design is that you don't know where to go, which one is your unit, which I think is really not, it's not really a concern for me, but uh, that was the, the main critique uh, for it. And when, you know, I have a project where I try to create the same morphology, but it's always a challenge of how the beams are going to be articulated. You know what I mean? Because when you look at that block, let's say look at that orange block, Okay, do you have a zoom in version of this at 2D? Can, can I see it? Um, I think, uh, our, at the buzzer. So again, let me just uh, look at that, no? So right now, it looks beautiful. It looks sculptural, right? So I'll annotate what will yes. be the challenge when it comes to uh, the technical aspect of the design. So again, uh, so, Assuming that this is the volume, okay, this is the volume, okay, and this is another volume, right, underneath. You get it? Sorry, ah. but you get it, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. yes, sir. I get that. So, ngayon, this volume has to be supported by a beam. So, it means that the beam is under here. Do you get it? Opa. So, parang nakakantiliver siya. Ganun. Yeah. Then you lose the sculptural quality. Right now, the diagram looks good. Do you get it? Uh, you lose, parang, in a way, the, the beam, hindi siya nakatago. So, parang yes. nawawala yung pag-organic. Yes. Yeah. And the purity of the skew, you lost it because you have that element protruding out. So, what will happen here is that this will become thick so the alignment and the articulation of this line, you don't you don't have it. You get it? That is why I'm demanding at this level that you guys already consider the beams, the slabs, the structural in general, uh, because it's easy to conceptualize something beautiful like this. But but if you don't consider the other elements of how the building stands, it's pointless to have a diagram like this. Maybe this is good for design too, but right now I want you guys to apply your learning, learnings from this, from your BT classes. You get it? Yes, sir. Okay, so you, you have two issues that you have to address. The efficiency and at the same time, the, the technical aspect of it. The structural. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, other, other than that, the, the directions is very good. I like the giant chicken wire concept <laughs> that will become interactive. Yeah, ano pa? Giant chicken wire. Oh, you play guns. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me of uh, chicken wires. So we're like the chickens <laughs> with a big chicken wire, uh, a big scaled up uh, chicken wires. Okay. Get some. So uh, say again. Okay, sir. Yeah, just make it the reality. That's your challenge. But the design the ideas, I mean, it's all good. All right? All right. Thank so, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So who wants to go next, guys? Sir, can we go next? Go. Sure. Yeah. Sure. How about my share screen, Carlos? So, yeah. Can you see it, sir? Yeah. 
Okay. Jazz, do you want to start this one or? Uh, oh, sige. Okay. Um, so, yeah, to start it off, sir, um, from our last week's presentation, um, we said that we would go into the site more, um, analyze more the, the spaces or how you how it would actually correlate with one another. So we've merged. Um, you've been like presenting different um, spatial relationships, uh, but part by part of each um, area of our site, and we decided on you know mutating it more and combining it. So you can have like a a ver uh, like first version of everything uh, as a bubble diagram. Um, so this is basically the um, the one on the left is the waste collection and the farm produce. And uh, the other one is the food consumption and the spa that we are going to um, integrate. So um, just to like state it, um, we have four programs in our site, um, which are the um the spa the farming the market and the food park slash cafeteria um so those four are actually uh, the main activities around our site and it kind of works around with um yung mga idadagdag namin, um which is on the next slide yeah just to add a little bit to that sir uh, we wanted to harken back to our multi-generational idea like especially in kind of um, for the developing these ideas or functions for every space so we created like um these ones to kind of cater to each individual stakeholder mm -hmm. and or like um some of them combined together so um actually quite similar to what's in jericho presented a bit like just before us where the differences you know our stakeholders goes to the um children adult and senior so it's yeah well i guess like in terms of the idea it's quite similar to the shared spaces and stuff like that but yeah and then um, so yeah, this is basically um, parang as a whole, um, our bubble diagram. Um, and what we haven't touched for a while is the water hyacinth propagation, which we will develop further on this week. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll mention it Carlos later. But um, I guess um, the highlights of this is basically, um, there's only going to be one very private space, um, which is going to be the kitchen. Kasi doon nangyayari yung parang people can't enter there at all. Um, I mean, it's not open for the public. Um, but the rest are going to be semi-private and public spaces um, because you want to, uh, you want the, the space to really be open for um, all the um, age groups uh, that we will cater to. Um, and uh, this bubble diagram can be seen later on with uh, what Carlos is going to present with um, like the look of our site now, the upgraded version of it. But I guess um, here uh, with this bubble diagram, um, you can see that everything is uh, directed to composting. Um, it goes through it, except for some areas, which are like, which is the market, because we want to, um, we want some areas to be um, kind of like clean in a sense that like everything that is happening in the market would be fresh and you know it's not ideal to put composting there but we could change that if you know we see that it is possible um but yeah carlos do you want to add anything uh yeah and then like just a note so as jazz mentioned the one we're currently like in the works of um reworking the model like from what we showed last week so i'll be presenting that a bit further on but then we wanted to show this also because We'll be using this in the future to help us uh, define each room or space and like how they interact with each other. So, parang we'll use the like yeah the direct access or indirect access to help us in mapping out how close each room should be to each other and how like we can kind of uh, shuffle them around the site to make it more uh, efficient for all stakeholders. Uh, this one, answer is um. We presented la something last week, um, the rotating uh, composting bins, and we just kind of wanted to make it more realistic. Um, uh, we were thinking of the materials that we will use and how that it will actually work. Um, so so far, hindi mo na namin siya ganon in experiment with like how, um, like for example, how we're gonna in integrate it so walls or any part of the building. Um, we kind of 
wanted to like make it more realistic muna. so uh, with this uh, we are planning to use uh, lightweight materials um so basically uh, we wanted to put a detachable panel and um, an acrylic panel window um for uh, the composting to be uh, visually um, accessible to um not just the people who will take care of it but the other actual users of the site um and um, yung unang namin nilagay, uh, yung unang namin um, pinaglagyan is yung railing. And what we found um, crucial in creating this is it has to be below chest level, um, the, the rotating bins, um, for it to actually work, for it to be seen. And it wouldn't be, um, parang it's not ideal to put it above chest level. And um, for it to actually rotate, um, we've calculated the volume of the area, uh, vo volume of the rotating bins, and um, for it to spin, um, your maximum um, maximum allowable volume na paglalagyan ng um, compost sa loob is actually one third full, uh, which is seen there. Um, but yeah, so far this is what we have on uh, this. We're going to furthermore um, develop this as we try to integrate it with um, the other parts of the building. Carlos, want to add okay. anything? Uh, for the slide, no, no, no. I'll move to the next now. So anyways, um, like we mentioned, one, we're, we, had, we decided to actually rework the model from last week because one of the few of the comments you gave us for last week, sir, were that, um, yeah, that we only added columns to the outside for representation sake. So we decided to include that in the rest of the model as well. So we put columns all throughout. And then we also reworked the height to, instead of being um, strictly 2.2 from slab to slab, it's 2.8 now to allow for beams and piping while still giving like a kind of intimate uh, height level for the people inside it. So we'll go more in detail, but this is what it looks like so far right now. We also added, yeah, um, where we originally thought we'd use the bins like to help define the site, but uh, this is just like a visualization of it. And then, yeah, so this is like the ground floor. So we added already the columns, uh, as you can tell. So in doing so, I had to, yeah, remodel from the ground up because I also had to kind of uh, adjust the dimensions to fit like a column plan neatly. So which is why like we, um, in terms of progress this week, there isn't um, that much, but yeah. We're further developing the spaces and um, figuring out what we can do with each and how they can interact with the areas around them and, and stuff. So yeah, we have the catchment area, which is up here, the highest point in our ground level and the waste collection at the bottom. But then we'll also be using this um, difference in height, like how they slope down to each other to help us with our water hyacinth um, propagation because we presented a few weeks back on how we wanted to use platforms that had like water circulating around them to kind of cool down the area and allow for water hyacinths to propagate naturally in the area. So yeah, we'll be doing that. And then this one is um, the floor plan or what we decided to do at least for the other floors above it. So um, this is what it looks like in ISO, but then this is the map of it. So. We have public spaces and private spaces, but the entrance of it would be mainly through here, the middle, these two area or the bridges here. So you'd start out in the public spaces and like from there, you'd gradually go into the more private ones. So it kind of gradiates. So the more service uh, areas or the private sectors are farthest away from the entry points. That way, yeah, um, you can go from public, you can transition from public to private um, smoothly. So these private areas will be what we use for greenhouse, food park, our spas, and the other ones that see Jazz mentioned. Where the public ones will be for the more indirect horticulture related activities that we presented last week. So we're still further defining that panaman, but we're going to be combining that for this coming week. And then, yeah, regarding the valley as well, um, in supporting the bridges, we also wanted to create like column here in the center of the valley. Um, and we decided to use this idea. So our composting columns with the valley, um, we wanted to implement ways to kind of create like a feature that would highlight the area and would really um, serve as the focal point for the area um, within the valley. So it shows, so the valley in, in general is like our 
um, defining factor or what really highlights the whole composting and like uh, plant propagation idea of the structure. So yeah, and then this is just what it looks like um, in perspective view. So we wanted to show what it looked like to let you know that how it works so far at least. But uh, yeah, um, the placement of the bins and such in the rooms are still quite tentative, but we're still gonna further define that. But this is what it looks like from all the other floors above. And this is what it looks like from the valley actually. So we wanted to show like how um, intricate it looks in terms of like how the columns work with the bridges and like how you can see all the different bins and like how they'd spin, like how, if you could imagine it, then it would like be one of the defining factors as well. And you could see the people also from floor to floor and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so not that much sheets for this week, sir, but uh, that's it for us. Sir, you're muted. Okay, uh, okay, just uh, freeze this uh, a shot. Uh, I mean, it's okay. I mean, the, the, the rotating thing is uh, what I was talking about earlier. Like, it would have been better if we have a face to face interaction when you guys will be required to make a physical model to see how it's going to. To work. That's why I also forwarded uh, that engineering thing that I saw because something physical, something that you can really see that it's working. And uh, for now, this is good actually. Uh, but uh, maybe the, the next challenge for you guys, the moment you uh, step to the next level of design, is that how can you make this look more less industrial? I mean, the, the, the objective is not not to make it look complicated. Uh, but, you know, it's still aesthetically pleasing. It doesn't look like a, a machine uh, that uh, we just put there. Um, but as it is, it is it is already acceptable. Don't get me wrong. It's just that uh, your goal as a designer is to make it, make this like a norm. Like when you look at a wall or a column, you know, it's a wall or a column, it's part of the structure. Uh, but this one, uh, it doesn't feel like it's part of the structure. It's like it's part. It's like an, an added uh, feature. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, it, as a and uh, if you go into compare it, for example, uh, the work of Silagenio, and we're in everything is composed already as it is uh, a celebration of architecture with all those functional elements. Uh, do, do, do you get what I mean, um, Jazz? And uh, 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 yes, sir. We I, get it, man. It's just the our model so far, man. Yeah, it's purely um just to show that it structurally works. But uh, like we mentioned, man, Kanina, especially with the column here, we're still gonna add like the wireframe around it that okay. makes it celebrate the compost idea. And for the bins, yeah, we weren't really able to get to that uh, due to like yes. um the fact I had to remodel the whole thing. But uh, we're okay. considering that, and we're gonna be doing that alongside. All right. Uh, we noticed that yeah, the columns as well were quite overwhelming. So yeah, we're yeah. trying to ways to find ways yeah. to kind of make them disappear or like integrate them into the walls so that it feels less industrial. Pa. So yeah, we definitely understand. Well, what I'm happy naman is that you get the concept that, uh, you know, uh, sad enough that we think of the functional ideas. It's also about the synthesis to architecture. Uh, because what you want to avoid is having a building with accessories. Uh, for example, the status quo of houses or any building for that matter is that you have a normal looking building and then you add solar panels or you add the condenser units. Do you, do you get it? So this is how it feels, not those rotating things. It's functional, but that's how it feels. It's not architecture yet. Do you get it? Mm. Yes, sir. So, uh, yes, sir. So think of design and we you know without, without sacrificing what it is intended for. And then uh, for the ramp, um, it will need some structural, um, maybe add 200 more or probably 300 for on the sides. Uh, that will need support. It cannot be, and I'm not sure if that long span can hold on its own. Mm, okay, sir. okay, so it will have, it will need a little bit of thickness. 
if it's going to be a short span, it's okay if it's going to be buhos. But right now, it's just, you know, too long of a span. Okay. So other than that, I'm excited to, to see what's next for this project. Okay. So I think push pa. All right. Thank you, Jazz and Carlos. Thank you, sir. So, okay, Jao and Dea, are you ready? Um, sir, Dea's okay. doing something with her family. Okay, see you. Okay, see you. Who wants to go next? Joanna? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead, guys. For our project, unlike what we mentioned before, the nature reserve, since it's separated into two parts, which is the nature facilities in the community, we also integrated um, those ideas with the technical aspect of the building. So, for example, anything that is facing the north and is facing the forest part of the building, it's more uh, covered in recycled kitchen container. Um, so that's represented by the black material. Whereas anything from the southern part, it's more open. And a part of the reason why we wanted to make this black is because this is the commercial area. So they have um, a greater perspective of um, the passive river. Because it's the commercial area that we have, it's not only just um, food shops and plant shops, but there's also um, a ferry terminal as well, so the people can enjoy different elements of the building from the, from the inside. Here's just like a comparison of the north and southern part of the building. So how we wanted to um, make use of the shipping containers is we separated it into different um, layers. So for example, at the outer layer, it's mostly made out of uh, shipping containers because there's um, a site right by the location we chose. Um, and then for the inner layers, we made use of insulation panels to cool down the building. From the rear portion of the building, there's rectangular shipping containers. So the rectangular shipping containers, they're to connect the buildings as well. So they will act as the hallways of our building. So um, the, the reason why it's angled at the front is to collect uh, natural sunlight and also to divert the rainwater for rainwater collection. Um, this is um, a section of the panels, such as the shipping container panels, and how we plan to integrate them into each form of the building. So, on the outer layer, it's made out of recycled uh, metal sheets. That's the new one. Uh, sure. Can, uh, am I agreed? Uh, okay, so for uh, going back from uh, windows, so the type of glass that we want to use, again, is the smart glass. So at least it can adjust or the users can adjust the, uh, not just the temperature as well, but also at least the lighting inside. So at least they can control to whatever aspect they need for their specimens, especially especially for the uh, laboratory side. So uh, next. So um so if we're gonna go to the uh, technical side aspect, um we would want to uh use the detail of the walls. So I think it's I I honestly think that we might be lacking a little bit more for detail, but I uh this is what we have so far. So on how we're gonna install everything uh to the wall, especially especially for the laboratory side, together with that um smart glass. So and next, so this is um the technical uh aspect. 
of or like the structure of how we're gonna make the building um stand especially for the and also showcase the framing or the roof um in each uh sides for uh, later on we'll show a detail and also um uh, measure uh, the dimensions so on how we were able to come up with this uh, structural framing for our structure. So this is our placement of columns. Uh, the next following slides will be uh, shown on how how uh, the spaces, uh, how big the spaces in between each columns for uh, each program to represent each structure as well. So this one, so this is like our, our side view. So how high uh, for our uh, first story, we have like a two point, uh, 3.2 meters. For the second floor, we have um, three meters. Uh, this includes the top beam already with 0 0.2 together with the columns as well. So for our roof, uh, it would be 2.6 meters high. So in total, off, we got like, uh, 10.20 meters. So next, um, so we have the spaces. Each. So we have for the beams. So we have 5.50, 5.5 meters in each spaces. And for the uh, high uh, corridors and the walkways at the side. So we would allot spaces of two meters. So in total, we have um, 13 meters. So. This is how we'd uh, place all our columns together in each basis. <clears throat> okay, so like what we mentioned last week, um, the landmark building that we chose, it will be along the transmission route. So it's a second one of the piece of the black mezzanine in Manila. And it's very important to celebrate the black <laughs> not just annually, but also throughout the year. So the site that we chose, it's along the Pito, the Santo, and Ayala Bridge. Um, so here's the location. Like what we mentioned before, and we kind of revised it. So the orange, um, blocks. They're the confession part. So we placed it really along the road, but also to get better views of the passage river. So along with, for example, the votive candle rooms and the confession pods, while they're inside the building, they can get a better grasp of the exterior as well. And then underneath the building, there's actually um, a driveway for the roads to pass by because in this um, little isolated island, there's, there's only one access to go inside the island, which is the one highlighted with the yellow color. Okay, and then for the other side, um, the blue block, it's represented by the chapel. So on top of the road, there's, we decided to place a chapel so it's like a symbol of um, blessing the cars passing by the bridge and passing by the road underneath. And then to connect the ground with the upper chapel, we decided to place um, a stair area beneath the chapel. So here's like this rendered perspective of the uh, west and east elevation. So, for example, in the east elevation, you can see how the stair has um, views of the passage over so that when the users go up the building, they can get a sense of the inside of the outside. And then for the western uh, perspective, the covering and the confession pods, um, while they're inside the tight spaces, they can also get a sense of the water views. Yeah. 
this is not the allegations of the contraction tabs on this page leading to the chapter. So on the right elevation, you can see um, how the smaller blocks, they're represented by the contraction tabs. And then the one in the middle, it's the voted candle uh, ring. So I think chapter, it's very important to um, pray to the Black Nazarene because it's a sign of um, good health and uh, blessed life. And then for the left elevation, that's where we place the stairs. So that's why there's a bigger uh, window. So that I think it's one of the most important elements of the building for people to access the chapel upstairs. So the reason why there's like a big window also on either side is so we can maybe display the statue of the Black Nazareno so that people passing by the Ayala Bridge, they can actually get a view of the inside of the chapel and also to make use of the, um, um, the West and East. This is the surrender. So as you can see from underneath the chapel, there's actually a tunnel because the road that we placed it on top of, that's the only access road for the isolated um, hospital. It's like the concept is um, sort of a drive through blessing. So whenever ambulances or private vehicles pass by the road, um, they get a sense of being blessed by the chapel. And then for the interior perspective, we wanted to make sure that um, the statues from the inside can somehow be seen from the outside as well. This is the cross section of the building. As you can see here, this is the smaller areas where the confession pods connected to the voted prayer room or candle room. Then for the chapel dimensions, we revised it and the total floor area it's around 104 square meters. So this total of 22 so the floor area is 8 by 13 meters and then the height is around 7 meters high. And then for the structural component of the building, we wanted to divide it into like three components, which is the columns, the bracing, and then the skin, the outer skin of the facade. So for the outer skin of the facade, do you want to explain this part? Okay. Uh, so uh, the following slide would be uh, more of a uh, bunch of ideas for material uh, uh, for the material aspects that we want to present that could also give a um, parang get could give a super kind of superstitious belief in something like that that could can, that could be related to um uh religion as well so a way we were thinking so we used um a para fabric coating uh the next slide would be a, a detail uh for a, a composition of one but th for this this is what our ideas would be like so we would use this uh para fabric uh coating uh that could at least give the effect of a uh, uh, some sort of a cloth that would be uh, laid over on top of the framing so that at least the framing would help support this um, uh, clothing just like uh, the picture, the image shown uh, in the upper right. Uh, next. Yeah, and just to I, add to what you said, on top of maybe two, there's also one that I found wherein on top of the curved um, cloth, 
um, they sprayed it with shot heat to make it more stable and more weatherproof. So you're thinking maybe on top of this, you could use um, cement. And then, okay. So uh, the next one uh, would be uh, how I think would be like uh, to have its coating uh, for the fabric. So the inside would be the ground fabric uh, will be wrapped around with, uh, or how do you say this, compressed with other coatings that would make it um, stable and at least uh, resistance to the external effects or the environmental effects that could at least help withstand as a um, sort of uh, cover for structures. So at least, um, it could help uh, cover for the users uh, inside. Yeah, so that's all that we have for today, sir. Okay, so uh, I guess I've seen the previous slide from the last time we talked, uh, but when I saw the, the chapel, I, I was sort of worried how it's going to be made, how it's going to be constructed until I saw the slide and, you know, and then it made me really excited. And um, this is already, you know, just uh, run with it, run away with it. Maybe if I'm just going to challenge it, maybe uh, um, right now the direction is good. Don't get there. You can pursue that. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's just, a, I'm just curious if you'll entertain the idea of ephemerality. Uh, like, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, as it is, it's okay already. Um, but if you entertain the idea of ephemerality, we're in. Because uh, I was worried initially that it's going to be made of concrete. It's like the fake fabric in in Okada. Uh, so what, what, when, it, when it comes to this uh, proposal, uh, maybe during the translation or during that event, you have that fabric, they wear it on the skeletal uh, architecture because the skeletal architecture is also interesting and then the entire year it looks like this you know like something that is a uh, sculptural or maybe it can function some as something else and then during the event during the parade you know you you have that veil so uh, i think it's poetic that way but you know just entertain that idea it doesn't have to be like that uh, it's just that uh, i was just imagining how beautiful it can be if it's the yes, case. But the, the fabric that you already thought of is already good enough for me if you want to push for that. Uh, as for the, the first building, run away with it again, finish it already, and then try to create permutations uh, for the, fa the other fabric buildings in the master plan that you chose. We follow, guys. Okay. Do, do, do you have any questions? Um, none for me so at the moment. Okay, so you're almost on the finish line. Oh, you're almost on the finish line, unless uh, we take on the challenge. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're on the finishing stage. Just uh, just uh, detail it very well, especially the structural form. Oh, I forgot. Uh, can we go to the section of your fabric building? Because I think I saw a beam depth of 0.35. Uh, if you have a span about five to six meters, I think make it 450 mm to, to, to be safe. Okay, sir. All right. And then sir, likewise. Sorry, sir. Uh, sir, can you repeat that again, sir? 450 mm for, deep, for, for the depth of the, the beam. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, so you know you need to repeat that element for the roof structure as well because you are also supporting the roof structure and then also to have an option to expand it vertically. Okay, sir. Okay, so good. Thank you guys. Thank you, sir. See you. There. So uh what's to go next, guys? Uh, the author. Okay, go ahead. Sige, go map. Oh, sige, Abby. Is Abby here? Yeah. Abby. Para kasi kami nasa province. Nasa bundok. Okay. Sir. Mas, Mga probinsyano. Mas, mas mahina <laughs> wifi niya. Sige lang. Hello. Kinakaman. Okay, go ahead. Ako rin, kinakaman so, ako. 
<laughs> Naiiyak ako. Pero anyways. So, di ba nga sabi niyo, sir, parang we go back tapos rethink yung process namin. Tapos, ayun. So, yung represent ko ngayon, sir, more on like architectural parties. So, coming from this year, wait na. Um, Siyempre, um, ito yung like life cycle ng clams. So, this part, sir, um, if hindi siya sa like in nature, madalas ginagawa siya in a parang laboratory kasi microscopic siya. So, there will be parang controlled tanks, ganun. So, tapos yung next is parang from this ng part naman, sir, dito kami nag, parang nakaisip ng architectural party. So, after um, parang i-cultivate and i-breed ang clams, um, ganito siya sinestore, like through crates or nets. So, parang there are multiple always. So, parang crate. Ito yung consider namin sa parang previous iteration namin na naka-crates yung clams. Pero like others naman is like parang lantern type and box type na nakahang siya in the water. So, parang nag-isip kami like how can we also incorporate this in our fabric building. So, ito yung naisip namin sir. So, basically parang Um, floor to floor aquarium siya sir na like sa upper floor can be parang like the laboratory for the clams to ano i-breed doon and doon doon magi doon yung access ng mga aquariums then yung aquariums is naka extended hanggang ground floor so that you know it can be seen sa public and also you know yung way ng pag-store ng clams is through parang ganito like yung traditional way pag fina farm siya in rivers and i answer tapos next naman is like ito yung parang previous like iteration namin so yung plano kasi dito di ba sir um yung plan lang namin is to create like water cycling infiltration in this area lang sir na dito lang located yung clams and taro plant namin sir pero uff nangyari meron pa ba ako, sir Sige lang, sige lang. Ay, you know, so, so, medyo elevation pa lang ito kasi ka kami gawin yung 3D. Pero, anyways, explain ko. So, parang etong part na to, sir, is like, eto pa rin siya, yung same idea namin, like, naka-create type yung way ng pag-farm and pag-ano. Pero, inisip namin na, like, what if may continuous wall siya hanggang sa baba, sir, then may parang certain system dito na i-allow some of the water to flow down. And I sir, parang magkakaroon ng parang vertical farming then So that hindi lang siya sa may parang sa, sa area lang na to na meron. So parang like kita din siya sa like ibang floors yung like water cycling and also yung taro plant. So parang like yung water niya instead na sa taas lang like magkaka-system dito sir na magpo-flow down pa rin siya sir so parang may sl- medyo waterfall-ish na vertical garden na also parang may water filtration pa rin siya sir tapos ayun sir yung ibang sheets na kay Abby pero hindi niya ma-send <laughs> so pet wait lang na ka sir okay lang I like, I like what I'm seeing naman eh Uh, tapos um so from that sir nag um, baka mag-add kami na another typology to parang generate lang na parang interaction from users to parang sa idea namin sir so Sige. kasi nga diba what the uh, water cycling filtration tapos make clams and taro so those are fresh producers so we're thinking of a restaurant or a market pero most on more on nagaano kami sa restaurant parang like a pescatarian restaurant pero Ducks, okay. alam niyo yung parang alam niyo yung parang paluto sir yeah yeah parang sa dumpa yung parang pa. yes sir parang ganun so parang yung may areas sir na baka mag-offer din kami ng fish ng ganun pero kasi nga di ba like parang may water cycling kami so parang mag mag-isip kami ng ways para para naka-display yung mga fresh produce na connected dito sa water cycling namin. Tapos, alam mo yung mga users can, sila yung manguhuli. Baka joke. <laughs> okay. Parang ganon. Tapos, 
Pero, yun pala, iniisip pa lang namin, sir. Pero, yun pala lang, sir, ibang sheets na kay Abby. <laughs> okay, it sounds it sounds good. Uh, sounds good. So, uh, maybe next next week, try to create a floor plan already. Because yes, the party, Start the parties are... The parties are already acceptable for me. Can we go on to the second slide? Because I missed that part. Before the 3D. There, there. there. Okay. Uh, okay, see. So yeah. Okay, so and I need hmm. to see how all of these party are integrated with the structural. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, see. So yeah. so yeah, I, I guess yeah. that's it for, for now. Uh, but the, the direction is good. Okay? Isa so pang yeah. question, sir. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead. Kasi nag-try na din kami sa ibang typology, sir. So, baka mag-utility kami. So, parang pwede din ba namin emerge yung ibang typology dun, sir? Kunyari, yung utility namin kasi located siya sa malaking land. Tapos, magpa-function siya as utility, pero gagawin din namin siya as a landmark. Oh, yeah. Sige, sige. Pwede. Tapos, may commercial. Na, mer- meron din commercial dun sa area na yun, sir. Okay, Tas open open tayo sa sila ng tatlo. Parang ganun. Like how sir. do you make utility pretty and something that is uh uh-huh. you know. Ita-train namin siya na as a landmark pero yes, yung function yes. niya is utility okay. pa rin sir. Pero Game ako sa ganyan kasi bihira we don't have a lot of buildings like that. Utility is always seen as a back of the house thing. So it's a it's yes, good. Sir. All right. Yeah. Sige. Sige po. Okay. Joanna, are you are you good? Because uh, I spoke with Antea and understand the current hello, situation. Hello, hello, Abby. <laughs> yes, sir. May kala ko, sir, si Joanna po yung kausap ni sir. Ano po ba? ba? Ah, sorry. Ah, sorry, Guray pala. Sorry. Si Guray. Oh. Guray. Sorry, nalilito ako sa akin. Yes. I, um... Yeah, I spoke with I spoke with Antea. So uh, yeah, I understand so, the current situation. Do you have anything to show or or um, yeah? Meron po pero yung updated lang yung group. Sige, no problem. Good. So at least uh, may somehow may progress tayo for this week. Pero sir, alam parang parang from the previous slides, man, parang I I get what we're gonna do next time. All right. Sige. So this is the this what this will what ano uh, this is what will the the another uh, roof will look like to para uh, a curve it will be curved so that the pipings will be will be with like a side and I was thinking realistically you know as as I mentioned last time that the pipes will be arches. So, parang hindi po siya realistic because of the piping system. So, for now, dyan muna sa gilid. Then, this is what um, a mind map of, of what, of ano, kung anong gagawin sa rainwater. Like, ano, I was thinking of overflow for the rain garden, which, which, um, sorry, it being proposed to plan the one. Yes. Then this is the ground floor. Ito po yung rain garden. This this is the the this is the the floor plan. And I ano and I was thinking na uh, sa size ng my my rain garden or garden area jan like plants so that yung water yung, yung overflow from the tank ko pupunta sa rain garden pero pag 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 pero pag pag aaralan for the for the tank second floor floor plan and i was thinking dito na the hallways will be at the at the side ano at the court at the side so that there be view from the from the roads and from the roads yes. third floor the same lang siya sa, sa uh, second floor with commercial lots and stalls then i was thinking utility but 
ano na po, is ano yung utility building location for yung yung thinking yung may, may ano may idea for utility building location is beneficial for the park area and for the commercial area right here. So parang mga green greenhouse for plants. So yung malungkay aspect na din para. That's it. Okay. So sige, just like the previous uh previous uh, group, I want you guys to develop a floor plan already. But at this stage, we are already completing the architectural. So what's nice kasi is that you created the mind map. And the mind map for me kasi it's like a bubble diagram. Uh, except that you know you need to think architecturally when you are translating the ideas into something special. Do you follow, Maureen? Oh, yes. Parang... Like, kunyari, may ideas ka kung isang mind map. Like that. Kunyari, uh, ayun mo pala, it's almost like it's special na rin pala. Okay? Okay, so hey, coordinate. Sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, I was, kasi po sabi ni sir last nung kanina, sir, yung pasad. Mm -hmm. So, kailangan po ba sa in the end po parang papakita kung ano yung itsura ng inside of the building? No. Uh, kung may kasi mga special features na. Yeah, because uh, as you progress to upper design classes, you already include the interior architecture. That's the expectations are becoming higher. All right. Anything else? Do you have uh, any concerns? Uh, Okay, Bea and Jao, are you ready? Yes, sir. We're here. All right, Sige, go ahead. All right. Uh, do you see it, sir? Yeah, we see it. Yes, yes, yes. All right, cool. Um, so to start with, um, we kind of went back and like we really thought of the when what you said last week and how um, we needed a bit more from what we were doing, although we were in the right track. But um, the thing was, we were kind of stuck in uh, thinking about the skate uh, of rethinking the skate uh, spot or like the skate park or any of those and we were we weren't really thinking of the bigger picture so uh, we kind of went in a step back and from like our previous researches that we kind of just shied off we reintroduced those and to and hopefully we kind of and we hopefully we found something <laughs> to work with and uh, so to introduce those two concepts um the first one is applying culture and skateboarding so in this one it's about uh skate the effects of skateboarding in rural south africa and how um actually this was a documentary that i just uh, watched and then how they talked about how this skate camp empowers uh, these local Zulu villagers to grow together and to combine culture, their culture, and skateboarding, because you know um, you don't really see pavements in uh, uh, South Africa, especially in rural South Africa, and uh, you know by adding this um, like skate park in their area, it's kind of um, different from their culture, but how skateboarding works in their culture despite uh, these uh, circumstances actually encourage uh, them to connect and create families with their similarities which were which was their culture and uh, we're planning to use this to see culture not as something we should apply uh, individually something like uh, a specific culture applying it to our typology but using um or knowing that diff different cultures can connect um, to skateboarding and it's uh, 
kind of a wordless language. Or so. Yeah. And uh, the next one would be the empowerment uh, and skateboarding. So skateboarding in Afghanistan, um, it's kind of this difficult thing happening there where, you know, um, these uh, girls can't really do much because um, their free, um, there's a boundary between their freedom and their country because of the Taliban, so what they're doing. And it doesn't feel like how we, uh, how other countries, uh, you know, how they, it's kind of different. <laughs> I'm lost for words. <laughs> but, it's, uh, I'm, uh, but basically, like, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that skateboarding actually empowers them to not, um, to not become themselves, not, um, uh, and try to be more than what they are, um, as children as well. So, uh, what skateboarding allows is that, um, is going out of their comfort zone and trying to find a safe space for them and, uh, and to find like this place that, uh, doesn't allow, doesn't, uh, create boundaries, but, you know, it opens up uh, different uh, avenues for um, for their personalities, maybe, or what they would like to do, you know, despite the challenges in that country. Yeah, so, so actually, uh, with, sorry, if I could, like, add, um, with what we showed earlier with um, South Africa and Afghanistan, it does show, like, in this extreme, how skate could be some sort of form of escape for these people, like kind of experiencing hardship and difficulty in their lives. So in the same way, it's very similar to everybody else who um, uses skateboarding as an outlet in other countries, especially here in the Philippines. That's what the community is kind of built on that we noticed. And so, yeah, we just really wanna delve into how and apply like how skateboarding is an escape and that's what we really wanted to dig deeper into to be able to establish our concept further. So yeah, next slide. <laughs> so. Yep. <laughs> and then, so from that idea, we kind of really thought of it for like a couple of days. And like, we thought of something we could use um, and a body that we could use. And um, we thought of using dreams and uh, dream interpretation. And um, from like, by chance, uh, we found that dreams uh, is this, is more than, you know, just uh, things that we think of at night, or um, it actually means more than uh, what it is. And um, from like a bunch of uh, talks, researches and stuff, um, we've found uh, perspectives of, uh, Freud and Young's uh, about talking about dreams, and we kind of lean towards uh, Young's perspectives. But um, altogether, um, dreams kind of like is this body. Um, dreams uses your body as a medium of uh, memory and setting, and uh, in a way, um, what Freud and Young agrees on is the unconsciousness and uh, being conscious embodiment of space takes place when uh, we gain familiarity and the senses of already inhabiting it creates this feeling of comfort so we um, dreams play around with our memories and what we see um, in the space itself and uh, from this we were kind of the more we were looking at uh, these references the more uh, we saw um, how there's two things, the ego and the dream, and how um, the ego is that thing that controls uh, what you uh, decide on. And uh, it's this thing that limits you from uh, the real life. And the dream kind of um, suspends the ego so that um, creativity is limitless. And... Uh, from this, we wanted to play on um, dreams and how we could sort of uh, create surreal um, experiences 
by playing with familiarity and uh, um yeah <laughs> familiarity and like surrealness basically and uh, because of this uh, from the Jungian perspective the role of the dream is to educate the ego and basically um when the ego takes interest with the dream you kind of it learns from the uh, the ego learns from the dream and you kind of accept more and you and basically we want this because people um see skating as uh this avenue or this thing this negative thing that is happening in their um their city and from this they want to uh push them out of the city by probably making these skate parks or probably um making or this allowing them to uh play around in their city with like skate stops or like uh police or something right and uh from this we don't really want to make uh a skate park nor a skate spot nor a park but something that uh educates the ego of people and to kind of experience how skaters um uh, how skaters think and how uh inclusive their culture is uh to our uh, to you know regular people and how we could include regular people to the day-to-day -day of a skater so um basically this um chart over here or something kind of tells how if uh the dream uh if the ego likes the dream that we make for them uh we kind of create this uh healthy education of the ego by limiting yourself to the limitless or by adding that familiarity so that we can um, control um what we think and what we perceive so yeah yeah actually um from what Zhao mentioned earlier where the subconscious kind of builds the dream and where the, the slight consciousness when you're dreaming kind of allows you to make choices or whatever when you're dreaming and in a way whenever there's like a setting in a dream that you are familiar with that are that is built by your memories you kind of fill gaps within those memories to be able to create a whole picture that is memorable to you and allows you to do certain actions within that space that you have created in your own mind so in that way we wanted to kind of tap into and ask ourselves what is the most familiar to everybody else that relates each other to like a dream or something like that because what kind of drew us to dreams was as what Zhao kind of mentioned earlier was the surrealness of them and how people um, connect to each other through like because dreams are very familiar and something that everybody could possibly relate to which is why surreal art has become probably like a really popular thing when it was introduced to this world and stuff. So when we were asking ourselves what was familiar, we were kind of tapping into like the, um, what was integral in that person's life. So then from there, we, des we decided that the home or the house was something that was very important to tap into because everybody has their own interpretations of a home, but then the essence of it is still the same. And it kind of doesn't change, even though like it probably changes in configuration, but then the usage of certain programs within a home are all the same. So then that's what we wanted to kind of play around with, where we kind of connected um, programs of a house and then related it to a skate typology, kind of weaving it together. Like for example, like a living room could be intertwined with a skate park or something like that. So then in a way, linking it to what I mentioned earlier about how people have the subconscious build the setting, like the initial raw setting, which is the house, then comes the filling in the gaps, which is which becomes then the skate park that kind of taps into like a very dreamlike area. And with dreams, it does kind of show like a sense of 
place for refuge because in dreams, similar to how people kind of escape the um, skating, is a place that you can't be harmed and then escape from the real world um, aspect, like all the things that you experience in the real world, to kind of brush off, off into when you enter that dream and everything like that. So in a way, we wanted to create like a safe haven, a refuge for these people that is familiar and that they can easily understand and is very intuitive with them. That's like the essence of a house anyhow. And yeah, we wanted to yeah be able to create like a context of um, the home in the skate park is actually. Yeah. Next slide. So yeah, this actually is like our newer configuration of the skate park, which is similar to what we showed you earlier, sir, um, from like last week where we did show how we use circles more because of the freeness of circulation within the circles. But then with the three meter setback that we created that link each circle together, it does allow for a proper um, kind of career like movement that's choreographed. So then we wanted to like play around with this and how each space would link together. So then we do have like three main spaces. So then, I mean, main circle like area sizes. So then, yeah, it's kind of shown here. Um, next slide. And then the zoning actually was very much influenced by a house as you could see here, like for example, I actually didn't read the entrance, my bad, but then the like entrance, the main entrance would be like in between the clinic and the skateboard recycling shop. So that's in between the red and the green area. And from there, similar to home, you'd be like introduced um, welcomed in by like a foyer, then the living room, for example, and then making your way to more private areas or to the kitchen and dining room. So then we wanted it to be, um, yeah, intuitive that way. And like with this zoning plan also, it was it was quite similar to how we applied it to the presentation that we did last week, where like skate parks would be designated in certain areas that allow for proper circulation and um, yeah, proper movement for the skaters. So then though we linked it with the living rooms and everything, it does, it's still very cohesive in that sense. And yeah, this is it for, this is a more general zoning plan. And then the next one is uh, more, oh, the legend's gone here. But yeah, this one kind of shows the different um, zones. So for example, sorry, I don't know where the legend went, but then the gray, the light gray, the super light gray is where the shops would be located as the cursor can show you there. And while the beige one shows, the beige, yeah, that one shows a skate park area. And then the pinker ones show like skate spots, more intimate skate spots that would signify like a bedroom, how it's more private and everything like that. And it's more, um, well, not so isolated, but then more uh, into the direction where you'd have to choose to go there rather than it being like in, a very natural kind of movement towards a space as compared to the living room and the dining area. And so, yeah, we could play around with the openings through the hallway that we wanted to uh, provide. And with that hallway, actually, I'll show later on how we wanted to kind of not really play around, but then um, implement, yeah, implement the, our research about the ego and how in dreams and in this um, space, we can kind of um, educate the ego in a sense and also um, provide for like a sense of healing. And yeah. And the, yeah, as you can see there, it's more like, it's the same colors as the one previous anyway, where there's water collection from blue and then red is the clinic area possibly and like our work area and also yeah for the bus stop which is more orange but I don't know if you can yeah that one's a bus stop so then 
Yeah, things like that because the bus stop, as shown earlier in the more general zoning plan, is like the garage or something like that. So then it's very much like a home. Next slide. Uh, so now that um, we saw that, we're going to deconstruct our ideas and how uh, it formed through those uh, zonings and uh, those configurations. And so uh, from left to right, from that diagram, um, the first one would be the private spaces for intimate skate spots. Basically, these are the bedrooms. These are the um, the toilets, the ante rooms, and stuff found in like uh, usually the second floor or hidden in the side of the house if it's a, a bungalow. So basically, um, we got these references from uh, online, and the this one would be um, from the Bainabato. Uh, having an ante room and a master bedroom and a balcony, um, but the uh, the one below is a more typical corridor with uh, a shared uh, toilet and the uh, bedrooms in the sides. And so, how we wanted to um, to transform this space specifically uh, is to create these uh, intimate spaces that uh, that people could discover and could make. So uh, basically, um, from this uh, diagram over here, um, we see this boundary, obviously, but then uh, you see how we create void spaces that uh, sort of makes uh, almost um, open spaces for them to create. But then we do have stuff that are made for uh, skateboarding specifically because uh, we do want that um, a medium of, uh, um, of flat ground tricks and uh, uh, bowls and verts, ramps and all. And you have these intimate spaces with uh, probably with like benches that can be for, uh, that can be ledges, uh, but really they're more of that um, toilet thing where it's really intimate, where, uh, um there is really no program uh but it's really an enclosed room for themselves and for maybe two or three more people and then for the realized one in like a circle um because our idea is to apply choice and that's how we uh, um apply the researches of um the dreams and how and how we could educate the ego and their choices and so when we are giving choice in this surreal world unlike a dream where it's linear and uh, everything is like uh, everything is uh, already um planned uh we sort of create an open plan in here or this um or creating closed spaces but then the plan itself is all over the place for circulations and uh, from this, you see more open spaces that you could create uh, by yourself. And you have an ante room here that became like this, just this bigger spot uh, for probably waiting for your turn for the bigger bowl or um, your regular uh, flat ground tricks, right? And so uh, from this idea, um, this is different from the others, but then this one specifically um, lets you uh, explore the area and find new things and create uh, places for yourself and it may it becomes more personal like a bedroom uh, yeah and basically something uh, unorganized and not choreographed in a way and so this is for the configuration for the living room and how it can transform into a skate park so then in essence like what Jao did was kind of take in the, um, the zones for a certain furniture and the functions of each furniture so that we could kind of relate it to what could be in a skate park. So yeah, as you can see here, like for example, lounges could be ramps or lounges can be volcanoes and pyramids and how 
in I remember in week four we kind of applied how um, we could create um, skate typologies and apply it into different ways. Like for example, how ramps could possibly be a bench or something like that. So then that's how we could apply it into these spaces. And also like, for example, surfaces to place things on top of like a table or something like that. Those could be transformed into things that people don't, you, like wouldn't really tend to walk on top of, for example, like a normal pedestrian or something like that. So, or could possibly interact with that is similar within shape of what we want to kind of imitate the sense because we don't really want to transform it to a very different degree, like to something that is already unrecognizable and unfamiliar. So then we do want to create it like, for example, a fun box where it is a rectangular boxes, possibly one or stuff that are, are one or more kind of piled up into like a certain area that allow for the practicing of different tricks by a skater or something like that. And also um, bowls and everything that could possibly allow for like a significant, like to be able to signify a similar function or a similar form to the previous analysis of a, la of a living room. And so like with the lounge areas and for example, entertainment, we wanted to use those as an opportunity to create um, little shops within a space. As you mentioned in the previous um, presentations before, we still do, did want to create spaces that weren't just meant for the skater and allow for like possibly a natural surveillance of kids that I want to possibly play in the skate park or something like that. So then we wanted to allow for uh, like a more natural way to insert um, ideas like this and also like intertwine them with the skate park itself. So then by the orientation of these different functions, these different skate typologies into this living room, we kind of allow for um, like a more familiar and recognizable flow of movement around the spaces. So as you can see here, like in the leftmost diagram, actually, it shows at the first part when you enter, as you can see, there's like a door or something, like the first entrance. Yeah, that is more of the formal living room, apparently, where you enter the house and kind of are welcomed into a more formal space. And then you kind of lean in towards uh, the more informal where it's much bigger and al allows for uh, a much more free yet um, semi-choreographed movement of people to um, enjoy the purpose of the space. And yeah, that's basically it for this one. So the next one would be the uh, skate shop. And as you could see, like um, from our base, um ideas from like a spatial thing with like bedrooms and stuff and it becomes about the furniture this one becomes about uh the process of what's happening in the dining table because uh you know if we don't really uh, if we only stay with like probably a furniture or the uh, spatial relations of each room um would kind of be it would be weird in a way because you know, if we only used uh furniture is like where would the china cabinet be or something right so uh the idea here is to um apply um uh, what's happening in the dinner table and having like uh, your rice and your um meats and stuff in the middle and having like uh plates in the sides uh and passing uh, these uh dishes uh, from person to person and from that idea, um, we uh, thought of what if uh, we could do the same process or the same idea with uh, uh, creating a board. Because um, I would say that um, creating the board the, is the most important thing or it's something that you have to learn uh, along the way. And uh, we don't really see uh, these things happening, but then um, an idea in mind something like a, um, like a workshop where uh, you could make your own thing and uh, 
you kind of pay for it afterwards or you pay for it then you make your own thing inside uh, that uh, area um we kind of wanted to play with that and uh kind of forming these uh circles over here for loose circulation and to go all around and get their uh required um um like parts because um basically um these aren't you can't just buy any and it will work immediately um we need to find a system uh, in which the deck is relative to the trucks and the trucks is relative to the wheels and so on and with the other parts as well but then uh because of this loose transition or the circulation uh around this area we kind of made this uh where you could go back and forth and choosing which one you really want or um comparing uh two different things uh which fits for your uh deck or your board and like in the workshops in itself in the sides uh we thought of uh adding the um the nuts and bolts the screws and stuff in the workshop itself kind of like a workshop with a pair of scissors and tape and paper kind of like that or pencils you see uh, these things um that you can you could kind of combine your board or form your board easily and free uh, because um you'd actually have to buy um buy it separately the screws and stuff and the, the tool itself and the tool isn't really um accessible and it's quite expensive so uh building your board for the first time is actually not really um doable unless you um ask for um like the tool itself because it has lots of sizings for the nuts so having this shared space where people could actually communicate with each other um and like share their tools share their parts um compare maybe and maybe help out other people would be ideal in this uh skate shop and workshop configuration because one of the aspects we want to apply in our um skate shop is that education educational part where people could actually learn from other people and that's what's great about um skateboarding is um people could teach other people easily and uh, without you know using any language actually so yeah and then the next one would be the recycling area for use skateboard decks and we thought of using a kitchen island setup because of how uh, circular it is and how there's this um thing in the middle that makes it circular <laughs> basically um from the kitchen idea of like um a more formal kitchen we'd have a dishwashing to storage and food prep service area with in the middle being the meal the cooking of the food and we kind of translated that to how uh we plan to make um these furniture or uh recycled skateboards basically what we want out of this is uh furniture but also um new skateboard decks for from used skateboards and uh, it's that's entirely possible in like a small space so uh we don't really want a huge space for this place but then um because of how you need like 20 skateboards to make probably like four to make four decks um it's kind of you, you kind of have a hard time like making it an actual thing an actual factory so uh, and because people don't actually break their decks so often um you have to collect those stuff and then make it into the furniture or the decks that you want so uh, in a way you want this place to be a small intimate space but then you also have um maybe window picture windows to see the process or to see the furniture itself being translated into like use skateboards being translated into new things yeah and uh basically to give more uh information with how it's made um 
first off you get your boards 20 skateboards then you remove the grip grip tape and you sand it off well you sand all the paint out then you put it on the hydraulics and laminate it then you put it on um the saw i forgot the name <laughs> and then um to uh, square off the edges and uh, basically you have a, a new recycled uh wooden plank uh for your uh, whatever you want is he do you know to use this for so yeah and for this one it's actually a lot more direct where the flow of for example a garage could be transformed into a bus stop so then yeah it's more like a space for vehicles to enter and exit possibly park in and also a place for storage which could be like a workshop which we kind of understood in how garages make use of their space as well as it can um, be a place for people to circulate in so then we're able to translate the workshop and vehicular entrance and parking of the cars into the workshop as a stall and the vehicular entrance as yeah, the bus or jeepney stop and also a waiting area for when vehicles want to drop off and pick up people in the skate park itself. So um, applied to the circular uh, form that is a part of our entire um, yeah, design, essentially, like we wanted to make stalls that kind of surround, in a way, the bus stop so that it allows for people to use these stalls to you know make them buy in the area and then get food drinks whatever they need so then it's a lot more like a resting place as well as it can be applied as a, another space for um people to properly circulate around because it's actually as like it's like it's next to the skate park area so then it does also allow for like a transition to like an entrance towards the rest of the skate park around because in if you remember like the zoning earlier there was like space in between the skate shop and the bus stop so then it does allow for another my like more minor entrance than the um, one in between the clinic and the skateboard recycling shop but then it does allow for that as well so then this um bus and jeepney stop like a house like similar to a house allows for a more informal entrance space yeah next slide please and then this one also as i mentioned i've kind of elaborate on this like a foyer the the hallway kind of directs people to where they would be going in a certain space so then for example in an entrance of a home, it kind of directs people, for example, to the living room or to like a more public area where guests are supposed to gather. And there's also like a direction toward the more private area, like for example, a staircase going to the bedrooms or even if it's like a bungalow, it is, there is access from the entrance that you could see directly towards a more private or semi-private space. So then that um, kind of looking into that, we were, um, looking at how it could apply to the hallway itself, the foyer. So then the entrance hall that, as you could see on the rightmost image, the diagram shows an orange arrow. So that's actually the main entrance. And so in a way, we wanted, similar to a home, to provide direction. Like it kind of is choreographed in a sense that we um, give signals through the use of water to people that like so that they could see and hear the flow of the water there they tend to go in the direction of the living room the kitchen the dining those areas that are meant to be more public and more open than other skate spots because of the skate park and they kind of tap on the exercising the ego of the um, human consciousness. So then even though the water would flow a certain direction, which is, yeah, towards the living room as mentioned, um, people still have that choice to counter that natural flow and choose to go to certain skate spots or um, the 
the little spaces that are provided in that skate park, essentially. So then, yeah, as you could see more close up in the bottom rightmost diagram, it shows, yeah, how from last week we did want to show like the process of filtration, which we showed already, but then this is more towards like showing how we want to have a singular flow for the water because. At first, we wanted to play around with possibly dividing it to separate flows that direct people to all the areas. But then kind of looking into the essence of dreams and healing and how they intertwine with each other and how ego plays a big role in that consciousness, we wanted to really implement that into our design. Yeah, next slide. That's the last one. Oh, so yeah, that's basically it. To be, um, really summarize the whole idea and make it a lot more concrete. We wanted to tap into, yeah, aneric architecture. And so, yeah, aneric architect architecture. I don't know if we explained it. Did we explain it, Joe? Like, what? basically is... um like understanding the temporal qualities of dreams and then using it as like a potential tool to be able to develop uh, architectural design. So that's what we're trying to do here. So, yeah. Actually, actually, uh, actually using dream as a tool, it's kind of an intriguing proposal. So uh, I encourage you to do that. And I, I actually like that you already doing some diagrams, spatial diagrams, so somehow uh, leading towards the plan. And maybe I'm just curious how it's going to translate into something uh, three-dimensional later on, especially when you get mentioning skateboard, uh, skate park like that, and then dream-like uh, situations. So uh, yeah, I'm curious what the next stage is going to be. So uh, for, for this stage, I think this is all good, okay? All right, sir. Thank All right, you, you just sir. need to you just need to develop this further. Okay, you just need like what's the next step? Like uh, the three dimensional aspect. But as for the programming, I have no, I have no questions. Okay, sir. All right, sir. Okay. Thank good you. luck. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. See who wants to go next. I think Daniel and Kier. Yes, sir. We're, we're yeah. real good. Nice. Okay. Is it seen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi. Okay. So, um, house since um we're finalizing our we're just doing the final stages of our mosque so um for the shop house to preface this is the floor plan we're sticking with um and for this week we try to integrate the ideas into the 3d um into a 3d form so next Okay, so um, this is just a sketch, just to um, just to sort of gather all of our ideas and try to visualize it. Um, but um, the idea with the shop house, like our, one of our goals, is just to keep it as like straightforward and uh, as simple as possible while maintaining the different fabrics that we integrated also in our mosque um, just so that it's easily configurable because for this prototype we'll be focusing on um, a particular Filipino food which is lumpia but the idea is to integrate different other um, street foods um, 
into different shop houses. So uh, the idea is to keep it modular and easily configurable. So, oh no. <laughs> Sorry, okay, wait. Is it seen? Loading. Oh, there. Okay. Um. So yeah. Uh. For this uh sketch, what we wanted to highlight is the different systems that we applied from the that that sort of resonates with the mosque as well, since um. We'll be showing later that like where we plan to locate or where we plan to locate these fabric buildings and the mosque within our master plan. So um first is I'd like to talk about the rooftop terrace system. And um as we mentioned before, one of our precedents for this is the um, Chinese shop houses with the air well, as well as the concept of a um, bahay na bato. So uh, we were thinking about integrating the different um, plants that are needed for Lumpia into a terrace plantation system, just like our mosque, but in a way where if you see in the upper left corner, um, uh, the way it works is we're sort of dissecting um, the way traditional shingles, roofing shingles work and making it into flat holders. Um, so in a way, these shingles slope downwards so that the water flows towards the water catchment um, and air well below. Uh, so... Other than that, we're also integrating the wall tiles that we mentioned last week, sir. Um, just to show the our previous sheet regarding the algae wall tiles. Yeah, so um, just to go back, um, the reason why we're integrating this is so that there's also a way, a sort of passive way of filtering um, filtering the water that's being circulated. And um, there's also an opportunity for, for example, if this would be the fabric of our shop houses, if we can uh, diversify the different flat motifs that will be um, uh, integrated on the walls, depending on like to the family's liking or depending on uh, what products they'll be selling. So it's with the mosque, but yeah, the idea is to sort of reconfigure this and apply it also to the shop house. Here, can you go back? The, the, the sketch, yeah. Okay, and then um, other than that, what the other thing we were trying to, um, create also is a balcony system where um, we would have a system for the laundry. Um, but as of now, we're still trying to think of how we could do that. But the idea is to, like, the fabric of the shop house is to um, like going back to traditional Filipino shop houses where you could see um, clothes being hung in balconies. How could we um, celebrate that culture and apply it in our arcaded um, system in the facade? So that's also one thing we're looking at. But yeah, this is um, sort of a, just an idea of how to integrate all the systems together and make it configurable, I'll make it simple so with that it's configurable. Um, okay, so um, we're representing our planting requirements for the specific 
um, for the lumpia because we decided to focus instead of um, fried lumpia, we wanted to do lumpiang sariwa, which um, would focus more on fresh, um, fresh um, plants. So um, they're just the general planting requirements that you're following for the terrace. Um, like Janelle said, we would all. Oh, um, like Janelle said, um, we would also be applying the algae tiles, um, similar to that of the ablution area in the mosque. So, um, the water. I'm here. The water would come from the terrace planting area to the water passageway with the algae wall tiles. And then we'd have the water collection um, conveyor belt system that would serve sor um, that would serve as a transportation system for the different fresh ingredients that um, could be that would be used in the restaurant. Um, so this is sort of a design iteration that we made for the water collection conveyor belt system as well as the dining area. So the way we designed it, it's sort of like an open counter with an open kitchen. So as you can see in the um, flow chart, um, the rainwater would be collected as long as well as the um, water from the planting area and it would pass through the algae wall then to the conveyor belt system and then to a gray water collection and filtration system that would be then recycled throughout the whole thing so okay so um this idea is sort of similar to one used in japan where they would use um, a bamboo water system to um, catch noodles and then they would each have their own um, bowl of um, sauce and then they would dip the noodles into the sauce. So in a similar sense, um, the water inlet would serve as the um, system that would help um, move the ingredients throughout the uh, eating area while the open kitchen and service preparation area would be where um, the ingredients would be cut and cooked and then placed um, for the eating stations. So we wanted to do this in reference to sort of the Filipino street food, street food culture where um, people are standing while um, another person is preparing the food and then they would sort of wait for their turn to um, get the ingredients they would need. So they would be able to um, wrap their own lumpias and then eat it. Yeah, also to add to that, I think that one of the reasons why this was one of our design um, iterations was just to, well, I think maybe in the next few weeks, we'll be creating more diagrams and on like the dissection of uh, like street food stalls in the Philippines, just to show like the culture itself and how we're paying homage to that and not taking away from that, even if we're creating a structure for street food. Um, so like um, other than like, we're trying to stray away from traditional restaurant topologies and keep the culture itself alive through like making it more immersive where the the people who are dining will like will sort of uh, circulate uh, similar uh, following the flow of water and the flow of how their food is made and that they themselves could prepare um, the food just how like just like how it's traditionally done and the reason why we're using water as a transport system is also to keep that fabric and the 
entire concept of our city where water is the 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 main component um just like in the little details and how we could incorporate that into the overall system of the structure um just to add so like Jana was saying since um we're sort of seeing the decline of the street food culture since a lot of the times like cities are removing um these vendors from areas so we also wanted to implement this to sort of um give them a space where they could um continue to practice and this culture could continue to be um experienced by people and then lastly we just created this to show um where in our vision master plan we would like to focus on in terms of like creating the walkthrough for finals and where we could integrate the fabric buildings so we decided to focus on this um center where we have the um landmark which is our mosque and um we're trying to create the shop houses in a way like as i said that is easily configurable and can be applied to other typologies as well so um when looking into our master plan, we realized that we could apply it to um, the residential area near the religious zone and even our agriculture area since it's food based and of course the shop houses and the opposite of the Pasig River. So um, I think this area would be a good representation of like the old, like the uh, like a good representation of our concept for the city, even if it's concentrated in this area. So yeah, we just wanted to go yep. And yeah, that's, that's all, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so yeah, um, just like Silabea and Gao, the directions are or well approved, especially uh, you guys are already in the finishing stage with the church. Uh, I like the idea so much when you thought when you were talking about preserving the street culture, street food culture. We have similar scenario with, if I'm not mistaken, with the the key side of Singapore. In, well, th those are shop houses, literally. But I think uh, I think they call it hawkers, if I'm not mistaken, hawker or something. Are you guys familiar with that? The hawker yes, culture, like that. So I think you are trying to, to sort of replicate it, but in a way creating our own version. And I hope you really veer away from the hawker thing because it's Singapore's original idea already. But uh, but I commend the, the direction because uh, it's something unique and something that I think since it's more familiar. Uh, with Filipinos, it will be well received, even if uh, the architecture will be something new to everyone. So, um, okay, so uh, do you have any questions? So far, I have no questions regarding uh, your iteration. Uh, no questions, sir. None. Okay, I'll see there. I'll see there. Okay, thank you, guys. So, uh, that's it for now. Thank you, sir. So, see thank you, sir. Uh, Kevin and uh, Tracy. Sir, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if Tracy, Tracy, did you get your computer back? So, mabog din. Nag, nagka crash kasi yung computer niya sa Libra recently. Oh. Were you so, the one who created um, your computer? Yes, sir. Kaya nagbebenta akong posters. <laughs> um, so, sir, uh, I'm not actually not done show making my sheets, but I can screen share para hindi makold yung mga tao. And then I can just um, explain mm -hmm. if that's fine, sir. I'm not sure if Tracy yeah. got her computer back. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So, yes, sir. Um, is there a way I can screen share just the app, <laughs> the software, guys? Illustrator, lang ba, Kev? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh yeah, you can. 
You can is, you can share like the illustrator mismo or you can share like your whole screen. Parang sa Discord yan. Oo oh, nga eh. Paano? Share screen lang. Ah, tapos may lalabas. Oh, share screen lang. Tapos may lalabas yung software lang dyan. Pili ah, ka lang alik with the web. Sige, sige. Sorry, di ako sa nais sa Zoom. Um... Do I need to be in the window, Jericho? Ah, no. When you click share screen, it will ask you for which screen you want to share. Then just okay. click the okay. illustrator file. Sige, sige. Hello? Okay. Kita ba sa'yo? Sorry, I was in yeah. the process of making updates. <laughs> um, pero sir, uh, yung when we, what we showed you last week, was more of finding ways on how to um, move the water from the estera side to the across to the intramuros area and then um, so I, what we were planning to do was focus muna on how we would collect rainwater like the architecture of it ideally um So we were reviewing the process. I can, sorry, sorry, but then the first week go on the sheets. Um, I can type now what I'm gonna identify. Um, yeah. So first, you need a catchment, which is this area, sir. Um, and then. After that, it would um, fill to the initial tank, so initial tank, and then the pipes, not sir, the pipes on this area. If kita, uh, if kita, that's gonna be for the first flush. First flush. Di, di, pa, di pa kami sure, sir, how where, where the first flush will go, where it will dispose. Ideally, we were we were planning to use the first flush of water as fertilizer kasi yun yung may hawak ng mga dumi. Um, that can be used as fertilizers for the soil. Pero for storage kasi it needs to be as clean as possible para mas matagal ma-maintain. And then, um, so this space right here, sir, is uh, an idea of me and Tracy on probably how the, the rainwater collection structures is not just for the water but can also be used by the people uh, so we're still uh, gonna check out the program for that so space for people because sir um yung initial na pinakita ni, namin ni tracy at the start of the term was uh, just a column and then the people would be walking on the sides here um so When I was when we when I was making these iterations, I tried to somehow um, integrate the space within the structure. Kumbaga sir, yung um, it would have like a structural um, frame in here alongside the the pipes. Because the pipes on this area, naman sir, would be leading towards pipes to filtration. So this is the first iteration, sir. Um, these pipes here would lead to the filtration. And then this area naman yung filtration um, structure. This one here. Um, I answer. So Tracy got her laptop back. Um, I think she's going to join in a bit. So and after the filtration, it will go to the storage. Um, When we were thinking of the storage, we were wondering, we, we wanted it sana na the water, once it's in the storage, it can easily be accessible to the harvesters and the caretakers of the bamboo forest at the bottom. Um, so ayun, parang, uh, this was like an initial, probably a dispenser or um, a water feature. Um, and then we were wondering, so this is the first iteration, sir, uh, that you're seeing. And then... This one naman was, what if the tank on top wasn't there because it's uh, space occupying? Um, 
So what if the the tanks on top weren't there, and then the conveyance system was the conveyance pipes and the pipes leading to the fertilite to the filtration are um are uh, surrounding the space in here. Um, yeah, because it needs the 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 water needs to overflow. The water needs to overflow the conveyance pipe first, and then it transfers via um yeah it, it's connected to the yeah, it's connected to the pipes that need to the filtration. So ideally, sir, pag napuno na yung uh, conveyance pipe, only the clean water will be able to um, transfer to the filtration system under. Ayan. Pero yung, yung iba, sir, parang detail, more of the detail. And then same pa rin dito yung filtration and storage. Pero um, we humingi rin kami actually ng opinion kila... Uh, Lance, we, we actually talked because uh, me and JC and Sida, Lance and Julian. So the opinion nila dito was it's um, very it's still like a machine. Parang wala pa masyadong uh, architectural um, integration if that's the right term. So here naman Hello? what we wanted to do in hi. So I'm just showing this yeah. what I have muna. Dude. Okay. Oh, then Ryan na lang din ako. <laughs> um, yeah, my laptop crashed um, kasi. Pero I can show something after, sir. Uh, after you. Yeah. So, sir, um, so in this third iteration naman was maybe how can the people, uh, how can the water uh, be more of an experience with the people, ideally. So you still have that catchment over here and the conveyance and filtration pipes. Um, with the filtration system over here. And then we were wondering, like, what if the dripping or the, the falling of the water would be something that the harvesters can watch? Um, or, uh, yeah, it could be more of like a spectacle, maybe. And I'd like to share our sketches if you want. Sige lang, sige lang. Nasimulan ko na rin to, so I'll just continue. Okay. Um, so ay, parang makikita nila dito yung water that, that, that's clean already that's clean from the whole column and then we we checked it out further yeah so we checked it out further in this oh no sir oh, sorry. we checked it out further in this um, iteration like what if the water area would be under the um, yeah, below ground level, para maging dragon water feature siya, ideally. So, you would have uh, either uh, bubuhos siya sa baba or magkaka-dripping effect on the underside. Uh, yeah. And then, if we were wondering how these would be connected with the elevated areas for the visitors, and maybe if, if we were to integrate the program of the water treatment na kailangan in the facility. Maybe these could be um, spaces where they could uh, work. So, ayun, um, on the ground floor, kasi, sir, ideally, dun namin ilalagay yo, dun, dun yung bamboo harvesting and uh, caretaking process. Uh, because they have to carry the bamboo toward, uh, once they cut it down from the forest and replant, uh, and replant a new one, so if magkasama yung if um same path ng circulation yung visitors with the bamboo harvesters medyo delikado. Um but they can still see what's going on if they're elevated kaya hindi siya enclosed. Uh yeah we had research from that then back then na an open an open air uh an open air program is more appropriate for the physical therapy physical therapy. Pero hindi pa namin na-integrate with this kasi we wanted to focus on the water aspect muna. Baka, magka, baka magkagulo. And then, ayun, this is just um, looking at it closely from what Tracy will show. Yeah. Yeah. So um, ito, so I will... questions ka ba? After na. Wala na. Okay, sige, sir. Can this be seen? 
Um, I think I have to stop. Oh, okay. Can it be seen? Okay. Yeah. Um, that's how, this is our general um, massing, what, how we would be able to place um, our, what do you call this, our units. So there will be definitely a central area where it connects to the major points. So the uh, the reason for this circulation was from last week's um, uh, analysis. Like how yeah. can we like the issues of the um the the and generally in the Philippines, yung mga walkways, especially that crosses major um expressways like such as this, because we have two major. One of it is underground, the other one is above ground. Uh, this is a major um circulation for our vehicles. Is that it's not friendly for the. For, for people with disability or the elderly, like how can we make it somewhat inclusive for those people? And then um, kind of maximize the use of water um, in both ways, like taking water from the Pasig River and taking water from uh, rain. So the, the biggest units definitely catch more rain and the most, um, like the the, the processing center so it kind of uh, connects it to a, a complex so instead of um let, let's say my my knee led although this is more for bamboo because in, in our plan it's it actually leads to the um if it, it could be seen it leads to the uh, it's it's somewhat like a um this this entire project is somewhat a representation of um, how important the bamboo forest is and how we could water it, somewhat connect the estero, the man-made estero we made, uh, which definitely will go through a process of filtration uh, to help water the bamboo forest. Because we did the calculations from last week. Um, even if we tried uh, putting as much units to the entire surface area, it's not enough to, um, to to water the plants. So the the way we intervened is like um, that's why we switched. Like we went to the lot that helps connect the adjacent site to that, and then um, explored on how we could make that experience um, playing with the public and private spaces that these. This this public space can be used also as um utility. So yes, yeah, sir. Ito yung, that's what we have so far for now. Um yeah. with so, the exploration. Okay, okay that, that this is actually fine. Just that what probably bothers me is that it's very similar to when can you hear me? Can you see yes, sir, see yes. guys? Yes, sir. So I might have to go and ano um low but na yung ano, airpods. So uh uh no sir we can't hear you. Am I audible now? Yes sir, yes sir. Okay. So uh, what, what bothers me is that the semblance of the umbrellas with Will Alsop's umbrellas in the key side of Singapore. Try to Google it and I'm sure you will find it. Uh, the umbrellas is actually a cooling tower for the key side. Key, the key side is like, uh, try to imagine Eastwood. It's a lifestyle center with all the shop houses, with a lot of uh, retail and f and and it's really alive during the evening as it is a, a lifestyle center. So uh, they have this follies, it's not necessarily follies, installation, you may say, uh, that's almost similar to this umbrella-like structures uh, that is also a cooling tower. They, Will Alsop is a very imaginative architect. He went to the AA and um, it's like, you know, the way he designs is like, like the, the, the city is like his canvas. Um, if you're familiar with the OCAD or the 
the school of foot apparel design or something like that in, in Canada when it has yes, floating volume etc so it's actually coming out from a from an abstract painting so uh, for, for for the one in Singapore it's like a uh, a jellyfish uh, an abstract it's like an abstracted jellyfish just uh, google it so that is the only uh, very similar um, similar yes, uh, when I compare yes. it uh, with with that structure but uh, the ideas are there uh, just a matter of you know finishing it and developing it further and then try to keep in mind what my concerns are uh, other yes, than that, you know I want to see the program the, the entirety of the program and I want you guys to, to be on that finishing stage already of the, yeah. the right yes, yeah sir. Um, so sir uh, if I can uh, just probably uh explain yung plan namin going forward if that's fine yeah go okay sir or maingay <laughs> yeah, okay. Sige, sir um so yeah like i said our plan it for this week since you said last time was just uh jump in see what we can do with what we have so we yeah we first jumped into the rain water how it's going to work and then after this we're going to um integrate the 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 water transferring from the estero across and then um these water facilities because sir they need uh they need management so ideally we want to integrate those management because one of your concerns before was we can't leave it to the people lang paano yung maintenance niya and whatnot so that's that's one program that we plan to integrate and then on top of that is just to cut you, uh, let me just repeat, yes, like, you know, we strive for something machine-like in a way that becomes architectural, but as yes. much as possible, we want it to be more natural in the, fun- in the, in the, in its life, like in its process, yes. like yeah. it's less dependent on, you know, a man interaction or, you know, involvement. So, uh, uh, okay. just go ahead. Yeah. So um yeah sir uh thank you sir. thank you for that and we understand and then after that um ipapasok namin yung initial uh yung physical therapy research that Tracy had for the park goers that will ideally um morph the the pathways pa to a different um configuration and I think the right word was uh it has a life of its own so uh yes, yeah. yes. Okay. at the same time enjoyable by the people para hindi kailangan tutukan Ganun. yes 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 yeah. so uh yeah yeah anything else right. uh, th- no sir uh, i don't know what tracy meron ko ba no not, not at the moment sir all right see, see. uh yeah. thank you sir for bearing with our presentation huh? <laughs> Sige, uh, and, uh, Adrius, if you're ready. Oh, oh wait, sir. Mag-join lang po pala ako. Hindi pa po maka-join sa laptop. Wait lang po, sir. Mga five, mga five minutes po. Sige. Sige.